Hello dear listeners, Vitapulse Company welcomes you and today I am translating on behalf of our doctor Yelena Archibasova. We continue talking about the basics of human physiology and our seminar is about female sex hormones and main Vitapulse indices connected with endocrine balance. According to Ayurveda, it's ninth gland of internal secretion, which is either testicles in males or ovaries in females. Before talking about its functions, let's first look at the anatomy of female endocrine system. Female sex system consists of ovaries, which are glands of mixed secretion, then fallopian tubes, uteries, vagina, and external sex organs. Let's start with ovaries. They're called mixed secretion because on one hand they perform endocrine function and on the other exocrine. Endocrine function is connected with production of woman sex hormones. Exocrine is responsible for egg cell or ovum which is produced each month. After that, ovum is released from the ovary into the peritoneal cavity and the cilia of embrace sweeps the ovum into the fallopian tube. Then the fertilized ovum is implanted in uteries where all the conditions are created for normal developing of fetus. There are two main hormones produced by endocrine system, estrogen and progesterone. They not only influence woman's sex system functioning more than anything, but also determine her life state, her mood and behavior. Ovary is the central organ of reproductive system. It is also a gland and here on illustration you can see the process of ovum release into uteries through fallopian tubes. We said that second function of ovary is endocrine because it produces estrogen and progesterone hormones, but woman organism is so complicated and hormone production doesn't always happen at the same time and regulation of these hormones is determined by a multi-level system with operating center being in absolutely different location. As we talked on previous webinar, it's the glands of first and second level. They are located in brain and called hypothalamus and pituitary. Important regulating hormones are produced in hypothalamus. They influence pituitary, which in its turn, depending on cycle phase, produce two tropic hormones, follicle stimulating and luteinizing. They regulate the functioning of ovaries. Let's look at the scheme here and it needs to be said that hypothalamus and adenohypophysis and ovaries not only react to direct signals sent to them but also give a feedback signal. For example, ovaries produce progesterone that influences the structure of central nervous system. Hypothalamus produces releasing hormones that influence pituitary and then follicle stimulating hormone influences ovaries that produce estrogen, then stimulates follicle growth and its maturation. These are two hormones that work in the first phase of a cycle, which is called follicular. Another hormone of pituitary is luteinizing, which also influences ovaries but in a bit different way. It impacts the progesterone production and ovulation process. Cycles mentioned above form menstruation cycle, which is a period from one menstruation to another, and first day of menstruation is considered to be the first day of a cycle. Cycles can be different from 21 to 35 or even 38 days. We will take as an average cycle of 28 days. It starts in teenage of 12-13 years. First menstruation is called menarche, uh, that when the puberty starts and first ovum is produced and is ready for childbearing. From that moment organism starts working in a cyclic mode. Every month new ovum is produced and female hormones interchange each other. It happens until menopause when hormonal background is exhausting and there is no hormonal activity or cycles. Main function of woman period is to prepare body for child conception, its bearing and labor. If we take whole cycle approximately 28 days and split it into two parts, then first part starts from day 1 to day 14 and its function is egg cell maturation and its preparation for possible pregnancy. At the same time there are changes in inner layer of uteries so the ovum can implant to its wall. 
if egg cell gets fertilized, it implants in uterus and cyclicity stops, pregnancy starts which turns on hormones that work towards saving pregnancy. Egg cell availability is not long, around 3 days, and if there is no fertilization, then the cell dies. Between phases, there is a very important process called ovulation. First phase is follicular. It's when follicle that from form ovum is produced. It takes up to half of the cycle. Main hormone here is follicle stimulating hormone, which produces estrogen background. Estrogen is the general name. There are several types of this hormone. It's estron, estradiol, estrol, and estetron. What are the functions of estrogens? First of all, they influence sex hormones, menstruation cycle, hypothalamus, cyclicity, ovum maturation. So sexual function is the main, but there are some other like protection of vascular wall from cholesterol plaques, prevention of atherosclerosis, but only during the active time of hormonal background. Protective function reduces with the start of menopause. Next function is regulation of water salt balance. It affects skin condition, sebaceous glands. When estrogen background is reducing, we can notice skin dryness and its aging. It supports bone strength and stimulates the formation of new bone e tissue and holding in it all the necessary elements like calcium and phosphate. With menopause, women start developing bone problems such as osteoporosis and of course estrogens affect women's sexual behavior causing what is called in Latin estrus, which means passion or hunting. After the end of first phase comes ovulation, follicle that was developing during first phase ruptures and ovum comes out of it. We said before it is released through the ovary into the peritoneal cavity and the cilia of the fimbrae sweeps the ovum into the fallopian tube. When a girl is born, she already has around 300-400,000 of egg cells stored in her body and with puberty each month one cell maturates. When ovulation, the egg cell is ready for fertilization, so this is the most favorable period for pregnancy and ovulation always happens when luteinizing hormone is at its peak. It's very important to determine the moment of ovulation for those who are interested in pregnancy and for those who want to avoid it using the natural contraception. So what are the days when women can get pregnant? It's usually 3-4 days before ovulation, then ovulation itself and 1-2 days after it. Second phase of menstrual cycle is called luteal because luteinizing hormone regulates everything during this phase. In other words, it's called phase of corpus luteum. It's the gland of internal secretion which is formed in ovary on the place of the ruptured follicle. It starts producing second sex hormone, progesterone. This cycle happens on 12-14th day. Main function of progesterone is to prepare body for possible pregnancy. And this hormone is also called pregnancy hormone because it regulates woman's mood and changes uterus so it's ready for pregnancy. And all the conditions are created to carry out the normal pregnancy. If this doesn't happen, then progesterone level reduces. Let's look once again at the phases here. Green is estrogen follicular phase, then 13-14th days is ovulation, ovum is released, this period is favorable for pregnancy, then second phase is progesterone, and if pregnancy doesn't happen, pituitary and ovarian hormone deficiency starts, and endometrium layer is rejected, which results in bleeding. And here once again on the graph you can see the influence and work of hormones at the different stages. Red is estrogen and blue is progesterone hormone. Now let's look how things happen in the ovary itself. Here is the ovary and you can see primary follicle, the smallest one that women have since birth. Then every month follicle grows into egg cell under estrogen influence. Then follicle ruptures and matured egg cell is released and it is called ovulation. On the place of ruptured cell, corpus luteum is forming temporarily.
If pregnancy doesn't happen, it reduces and disappears. These cyclic changes connected with hormonal functioning can be monitored via basal temperature. You see graph with basal temperature which is measured rectally, so you can track at home what is the best time for pregnancy. During first phase the temperature is lower than 37 degrees, then towards the middle of a cycle it reduces and then it increases over 37 degrees Celsius. This rapid increase points that ovulation started, during second phase temperature repeats being high, and then towards the end it reduces. Such method is used by women as natural way of contraception. And ideally chart should have a clear separation into two phases. During first half cycle, which is around two weeks, the temperature is between 36.3 and 36.8 degrees Celsius. Then 12 or 24 hours before relation, each reduces for 0.1.2 degrees, which is called pre-ovulation by the temperature reduction. Then there is a rapid increase of the temperature above 37 degrees. This increase means ovulation when ovum exists ovary. Further, the temperature is um, above 37 until menstruation and then it lowers. But there are situations when there is no ovulation during cycle, which means ovum doesn't maturate and it's called a pronounced anovulatory cycle. It's when there is no separation into two phases and such cycles are absolutely normal for healthy women two, three times a year and within, uh, within each year this number increases. The best way to correctly determine your cycle is to measure basal temperature for one year and then make graphs. If cycle is stable, the ovulation happens on 14th day, but because sperm has pretty long liveability, the dangerous period increases up to 4 days. And 4 more days are added due to the liveability of egg cell, uh, so the period is from 10th to 18th day of a cycle, which is considered to be the dangerous period when you can get pregnant. If cycle is not stable, then it's more difficult as you have to know the shortest and the longest period of a year. For example, your shortest period was 24 days and you need to subtract 18 days out of it. And your longest period was 30 days and you need to subtract 11 days out of it. Then you get the dangerous period which is from 6th to 19th day. So what we talked just now is natural way of contraception. It has its pros and cons. Of course, it's physiological, uh, it's available, it doesn't require financial expenses, but at the same time it has low effectiveness and it is necessary to use other ways of contraception during this period as uh, you can't really trust this way. On this slide we split cycles into non-fertility uh, and fertility. Uh, non-fertility is when pregnancy is not possible. So since day one the egg cell just starts to develop so there could be no pregnancy. Then during ovulation the ovum is matured and pregnancy becomes possible. Then the max, uh, it is the maximum fertility period from day 8 to day 19. And uh, then the egg cells die because uh, if there is no fertilization then it just dies. So hormonal background change the way a woman feels and increase of strength and energy is typical for the first phase of menstrual cycle that happens on second fifth day after the start of menstruation and it usually lasts for 10-14 days until the complete maturation um, of the ovum. Estrogen level is the guarantee of femininity, beauty and the good mood of a woman. Then comes the middle of the cycle which is ovulation and in our body it lasts for a day. This period is characterized by ovum migration from ovary to the uterus and it has only one effect on the organism, the increase of libido. During this stage the mood of a woman is changing. Uh, there, there were studies that proved that 
During ovulation, a woman is at her beauty peak, she looks incredible, her body changes, which shows that she is ready for conception. Second phase is luteal, and it's when estrogen number reduces and progesterone level raises. It changes all the functions in the body and aims at preserving the possible pregnancy, thus increases appetite, it relaxes muscles, reduces workability, there could be water retention and edema, it deteriorates mood, there could be lack of energy and even aggression. Such condition shows up on second, fifth day before menstruation, which is called premenstrual syndrome. It is explained by hormonal exhaustion in the body, estrogen level is decreased, pregnancy didn't happen, which means progesterone level will be also decreasing, and internal tissues in uterus are rejected, causing bleeding. So we just talked about the natural ways of contraception, and now I would like to say some words about hormonal contraception, or in other words, oral contraception. There are different types of them, but they all have one function to stop ovulation. By taking all oral contraceptives, the egg cell doesn't mature, it doesn't leave the ovary, and if there is no ovum, then the fertilization is not possible. Also, these hormones change the thickening of mucus in cervix, preventing it from sperm penetration, change the inner layer of uterus, which makes it impossible for egg cell to implant to it, then peristalsis of the fallopian tube produces, because normally fertilization happens in fallopian tubes, um, then fertilized ovum migrates to uterus and implants there. So this is the mechanism of oral contraceptives. Now let's switch to Ayurvedic aspects connected with men menstrual cycle. First is Vata Dosha, and it has to do with the regularity and length of menstruation, as well as pregnancy or creation of life. It is also the cyclicity of hypothalamus hormones. Pitta indicates the menstruation itself or transformation period, and Kapha has to do with the fertility, ovum, and the unity. So, and uh, here are the main Vedapal's indices connected with endocrine balance. It's the modules meridians, bioenergy, and nidana. So, meridians module. There are no markers that would directly show the pathology of uh, female sex organs. We can evaluate indirect indications that can tell us about the cyclicity of sex hormones. For a better picture, there should be a combination of patient observation, anamnesis, and test labs. With VitaPulse, we can look at three meridians. First is three heaters meridian that reflects the state of endocrine system. Next one is liver meridian. It's the channel that is also responsible for sex functions because sex hormones metabolism happens in liver. And assessment of these three meridians can tell us if there's any pathology with the endocrine system. Next module is Nidana and Hatu, which means tissue. Shukra is higher tissue and literally means seed. It is associated with follicle growth. Metas means fat tissue, and we look at metas because adipose tissue influences the production of sex hormones and vice versa. There is a very delicate mechanism of their synergy. Estrogen receptors are expressed in fat tissue. The production of sex hormones is not only in ovaries, which is their main source, but also in adrenal gland that produces both female and male hormones in each body, and fat tissue as well, so-called extragonadal synthesis, which means outside of sex system. On the first slide we see that shukra is in tension, metas is in depletion, they can behave differently, but uh, and can be either intense or depleted state, or be both intention as it's shown on the second screenshot. Next module is bioenergy. Here we look at the power of bioenergy field. Uh, then we look at the distribution of energy in the organs. 
normally it should have equal numbers in all organs, but sometimes some of them can be exhausted. In here is liver and endocrine system, which can indirectly tell us about pathology in female sex system. Once again, I want to say that there are no clear factors showing such condition. We can only judge by indirect markers. All Soveta Genetics Company provides genetic analysis that can help to find predisposition to a number of different disorders. It is done via sending the biomaterial in a polymer tube to the lab. After test is done, company expert gives conclusion and recommendations on lifestyle, diet, physical activity, supplements, and so on uh, via, sk via Skype session. And here you see the contacts and please email us if you have any questions. And this is all I wanted to tell you today. Thank you for your attention and see you next time.